Six months ago, the Congress won assembly elections in three out of five states that went to the polls. All in the heartland, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, all big states as well. Several pollsters immediately said that the Lok Sabha election will be close. 2019, we were told, is not 2014. There is no wave and this election might throw up a surprise, even a hung parliament. That was the calculation. Now, these arguments hinged on four major issues. Rural distress, jobs, demonetization, the goods and services tax. Congress President Rahul Gandhi focused on all these four issues besides the Rafal deal to target the BJP and specifically Prime Minister Narendra Modi to question his record. Now, in the last few months, Gandhi raked up these issues in every rally, every press conference. Pollsters believe that these issues will decide voting patterns across India. But today, all of those people were in for a shock. Why is that so? Are these not election yeah, issues? Know. Sure they are. But perhaps their significance was overstated. Let's start with rural distress. The problem with India's agricultural sector is a structural one, a simple minimum income guarantee act or a loan waiver will only be a damage control measure, a short-term measure. Besides, agricultural distress did not begin in the Modi regime. The sector has long been neglected, and the Congress is perhaps more responsible for the sad state affairs in the rural economy than the BJP. Besides, the rural outreach program, infrastructure development schemes, provision of LPG subsidy, targeted delivery of welfare measures have all helped the Modi government without a doubt. The party has won across the country, rural and urban pockets alike. The second issue is jobs. Now, this has been a subject of great debate and greater controversy. First things first, India does not have strong data on unemployment like countries like America. Perceived unemployment perceived unemployment and poor quality of jobs is a perennial election issue in India. Every opposition party brings it up. So there was nothing unique about Rahul Gandhi raising the issue this time as well. Moreover, when an economy grows in size and scale, job creation happens. The results show that the people have reposed faith in the government to solve the problem. Again, the jobs debate and the criticism surrounding this issue has not yielded the desired results for the Congress party. Issue number three, demonetization. It has been called a, con a controversial decision by some and hailed as a game changer, a tough reform by others. But the fact of the matter is this, the issue failed to resonate with the public. One reason could be the timing. Narendra Modi, remember, announced demonetization exactly halfway through his term. Two and a half years into office, he announced demonetization in 2016. In hindsight, the timing looks impeccable. Modi has given his government enough time to offset the criticism over demonetization. It hasn't hurt him. Two, middle class Indians liked the transition to cashless economy and digital transactions. The ordinary Indian is not guided by macroeconomic rationale, but by perception and appeal. And this could be said of any voter anywhere in the world. Demonetization was seen as an attempt to bring back black money, to digitize transactions, to target money laundering, and that is how the people saw it. The jury is still out on demonetization, but the public was not as critical of the scheme as the Congress and some experts. Now, if the, these three issues could be bunched as poll predictions gone wrong, then Rahul Gandhi's attack on GST reeked of immaturity. Gandhi called the goods and services tax, Gubbar Singh tax, GST. Such a statement betrayed political common sense. But one, because the Congress came up with the idea of GST in the previous decade. It was the Congress's idea originally, but it could not get the bill passed with consensus. Besides, GST is a terrific example of functional federalism. All state finance ministries, including those from the Congress governments and the left, participated in the GST Council meetings. If Rahul Gandhi thought that GST rate should not have many slabs, his party could have raised that issue in those meetings instead of press conferences outside. After happily taking credit for GST, Rahul Gandhi chose to attack it. The result was this. The business community stuck with the BJP because they gave them a clear idea of what was in the offing. The Congress could have raised these issues concerning the economy, foreign policy, practical measures to bring in more welfare schemes for the needy by attacking the government in a shrill tone over issues that failed to resonate with the public. Rahul Gandhi lost the plot. It's not just a case of poll predictions gone wrong, it's a clear-cut case of poll strategy gone wrong.